Hey there, I'm Larissa from Beekeeping Made Simple, and this video is about your early spring, spring inspections. Now, overall, when you're checking your hive, you're looking for the same major things, uh, healthy queen, food, see if they need space or have too much space, but there are different goals of the bees throughout the year. And as a beekeeper, it's good to know what your bees are trying to do, and then you'll know how to help them. So in the early spring, like when you're first getting your bees, when they're first leaving the hive and breaking that cluster, it's like 50 degrees Fahrenheit to maybe 65. Um, there's not too many flowers blooming. There are certain things that the beekeeper can do to especially help their bee. First, the bees are trying to build in the early spring. That is their goal. The queen needs to lay as many eggs as possible and they need to, their colony to grow because the more bees they have in population, the more that they can um, go out to gather food and build comb and do all the things that are necessary in the hive. The more bees out bringing in food, the more food they'll have to get them through the winter. So um, that is their goal, is to just build as much as possible. And in order to do that, they need food. They need pollen and they need um, nectar because that's how they will want to make honey but also they need to consume a lot of honey in order to secrete wax and build that honeycomb without honeycomb the queen doesn't have anywhere to lay and so then you know that's a problem now first if you are new at beekeeping and you are not incredibly experienced at queen spotting that is should be one of your number one goals when opening your beehive in the early spring Early spring, your hive is very small and it will be a lot easier to spot your queen. So when you take that lid off, remember, I want to see the queen. Because when it comes to queen spotting, my number one tip to spotting the queen every time you take it out is that when you pull out that frame, the first thing you want to do is look for the queen. So you open up the hive, you take off the lid, you pull out that first frame, you count to five while you're looking. One, two, three, four, five. You don't see the queen, you flip it over. Count to five again. Don't see the queen, then you can flip it over and spend a little bit more time looking and you don't have to be so strict about how much time you take. It's really important that you spend just five seconds looking for the queen on each side because if she is on the other side, when you pull this frame out and you're looking and looking and looking and looking, you are getting, giving her a lot of time to hide. She can be hiving in a hole, in a crevice, under a bunch of bees, and it's really hard to find her. There have been times when I pulled out the frame and spotted her while I was pulling it out, and then I um, flipped it around, and I knew the, be the queen was on the frame, and I still had the hardest time finding her. And it was finally only after I just kept on flipping it around that she was over here on this end bar. And every time I flipped it to this side, she flipped it, went over to that side. And then I went on this side and she ran over to that side. Or there might be a little bit of a hole in the comb or something and she kept flipping over from side to side. They do it. It's not obscure, it is something that they do. They don't like the sunlight, they're in the dark all the time. You pull it out, they hide. Not all queens, but a lot of them do. So you pull out the frame, look for the queen, look for the queen, you don't see her, then go through the checklist and fill out what you need to, look for other stuff, put it back. Next frame, first thing you do, look for the queen, look for the queen, and then you can do whatever else and put it back. Start with the uppermost box and work your way down, because sometimes the queen will jump off one frame onto the next, but sometimes she'll jump from one frame down to the lower box. The next thing you want to do is just have a handle on your varroa mites. Early spring is a great time to put a treatment in. Um, it's probably been a while since the bees were treated for mites or maybe you bought your bees from a farm and you have absolutely no idea what their varroa mite um, management plan is. So it's great to just make sure that the mite levels are low. And once, if you're a beginner at this, you know, just put a treatment in to make it easy. And then the next year, maybe you can avoid this treatment. Once you have a handle of um, how good your hives are doing, how well they deal with varroa mites on their own, and how well you are doing at managing varroa mites naturally. Um, otherwise, since your hive, will, your hive population is low, other things you can do is take a mite count and see how high your mites are. If you have a number of three or higher, you're going to want to put a treatment in. 
And so you're going to want to do a mite count using a powdered sugar test. And I have a link to a video that you can watch on how to do the powdered sugar mite test. Uh, a great treatment to use at this time of year is Apovar. I have a link to more information about treatments to use in the early spring. But just keep in mind, this is a really important time for the queen to be laying. She releases pheromones and some of these treatments that use a strong smell like um, the formic acid and apigard, which are more natural, um, can, can potentially cause a hive to go queenless. The other thing you want to do when you're opening the hive is you want signs of a healthy queen. Because to be honest, it's not really a big deal if you see the queen. Um, I just want you to get good at queen spotting while your hive is small and it's easier. But when you're usually opening a hive, you don't have to find the queen because you want just signs of a healthy queen. Any old queen in the hive doesn't mean that the hive is, that the queen is healthy. And a hive with a unhealthy queen is just as bad as a hive with no queen. So you're looking for eggs, larvae, and capped brood. I have a link to our identification guide. Print it out, put it in a plastic sleeve, stick it in your um, notes so that you um, just have a reference, an easy reference for when you're out checking the bees. But um, you know, the eggs can be hard to see. So if you're using foundation, I recommend the black ones. It's a little bit easier to see that little white egg. Um, the very small larva can be hard to see, but the much bigger larva before it pu pu pupates um, is really easy to see. So the way it works is that the queen usually lays in like the spiral pattern so that she doesn't, you know, miss cells while she's laying. So if you're seeing that those really big white worms in the cells, and say, you know, like over here, just, just look over here and you'll probably you shine a flashlight or the flashlight on your phone in there and go like this and you'll probably start to see a little bit of a shine and those are teeny little um, larvae floating in food and then go a little bit further over and that's when you'll start to see the eggs that's what you want to see you want to see the brood and those three different stages eggs larva and capped brood and if you're having difficulty telling the difference between capped brood and capped honey capped brood you can see that definite little hexagon shape over each cell whereas capped honey has kind of this bumpiness over an entire space um, and then you also want to make sure that it's not too spotty. Um, these might be new queens. They just started laying, so it might be a, a little spotty. But again, they're laying in that spiral pattern, so it, you should see a pretty solid covering. You shouldn't see like an egg, an egg, an egg, and all of these gaps in between them. You might see gaps in between the capped brood as they hatch, but you won't see too many gaps between the eggs and larvae. Um, but again, give them a couple weeks, you know, to get their equipment up and running um, before you assume that your queen is a dud and not doing well. And if she isn't doing well, you know, after a few months, that's the time to pinch her. And um, I would purchase a new queen from a local farm, as local as possible, so that your hive has a chance of surviving the winter. Because a, a poorly, poor laying queen that's not very healthy is not going to survive the winter. And um, as sad as it is to pinch a queen and to kill her, the um, alternative is for, you know, your hive of 10,000 bees to not make it through the winter. So I would go with keeping the hive alive over the one queen bee. Um, then also, you want to make sure they have enough food. So if they aren't bringing in enough pollen and honey, you can help supplement them by buying some pollen and putting a patty on the top under your lid. Just a little bit. Don't put the whole patty on there. Just a little bit. See how it does. But, but especially you want to make sure that they have sugar syrup if they don't have enough honey. So make sure you have at least two frames of honey for every four frames of brood. If you don't have that much, or more, make some syrup and check out our video about um, spring feeding. Essentially, you're just doing one-to-one -one water to sugar. So four cups of water, bring it to a boil, take it off the heat, stir in four cups of sugar. So keep stirring until it's fully dissolved. Add a little bit of Pro Health, Honey Bee Healthy, whatever, what are those bee supplements to help them digest it better. 
stick it in the hive. Once the hive is growing and they are bringing in more honey and you know you have like a second brood box on the hive um, and each brood box has at least two frames of honey in it, take the feed off or if the bees aren't touching the feed after a week or two, take the feed off or if you're adding a honey super on, take the feed off because honey made from sugar syrup is no good. And you want to make this syrup from white granulated sugar, not powdered sugar, um, that has cornstarch in it, not brown sugar, not corn syrup, not cane sugar, white sugar. Um, and then you also want to check on the opposite space. So once the bees are filling up that first box, add another box with 10 empty frames in there. I like to take some frames from the lower box that's full and bring them into the uppermost box and put some empty frames down in here so that you're encouraging the bees to come up and keep adding more and more space. Once your box has um, fewer than two empty frames in it, add another box on top. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified about new videos and when we go live. Um, and don't forget, we have an online beekeeping class where you can learn about all this stuff and more in one space. And uh, you can pay for the mentorship or opt out of the mentorship, which allows you to email me with questions directly whenever you have them about your bees and getting started over the years. Check out the links below for all of our free resources, our ID guide to what is inside the hive, our beehive inspection checklist, our getting started guides, and more.